Hello Pisces. How are you? Having a good week? It's early in the week. Well, whenever you get the video. So, right, like, yeah. Okay. So, welcome to your weekly reading with me, Cindy. This is for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. So, Pisces, we're going to continue with sort of, well, spiritual readings, but it's a little, it's um, one of my favorite decks, and I haven't used it in a while, and I get so much information out of it, sometimes I don't even need to pull, pull tarot cards for quite a while. Ooh, we got the cheetah. So this is the uh, Unknown Animal Spirit deck. We're going to go into it, and we're going to ask, um, you know, what's within, where's the, the deeper aspect coming towards you of someone, someone, something? Like, what is the deeper aspect? that's coming towards you what what is really within them or a situation that's coming towards you what is really within them and then we're going to ask how it's going to how you're, you're going to feel with that right so pisces pisces something anyone coming towards pisces interesting stingray Ooh, huh this is somebody working on developing balance in themselves i want to also say getting a bit of a stronger backbone here with this energy, this is water energy too. So maybe dealing with another water sign, Capricorn. Ugh. Why did I say Capricorn? That is not a water sign. I just say Cancer, but I don't know. Maybe that was for somebody. Somebody's Capricorn needs a little bit more of a backbone. Um, but yeah, it could be Cancer. Well, you Pisces, it could be another Pisces. Um, or it could be a Scorpio. So yeah, this person, their chakras too. They have something stuck. Something is stuck in this person. Like in one of their chakra zones, I want to say, like there's something, there's something stagnant inside this person. And um, it is, it's, it's preventing actually them from having much of a backbone. You know, it might even feel like this person should step up or should have stepped up a couple of times for you in regards to something and it hasn't happened i'm actually with this energy with the card with i i'm getting with this is this isn't someone who's coming towards you i feel like this is someone like in your life right now that you're dealing with yeah i feel like Without even pulling your card, I feel like they've left you in some disappointment, a little confusion, like, seems like they probably should have stepped up or, but they can't, they don't know how, <laughs> they don't know how, they're, you know, this is all lit up here, it's showing us, it's the vertebrae here of the stingray is all lit up in these colors, it's like the chakras. And, um, but yet, you know, this is also about getting a stronger backbone, having a stronger backbone, but it's hard to do that when, you know, there might be a stale area in here. There might be some stagnation issues that they haven't dealt with in their own life that are preventing them from growing to another level, which is stopping them from having this fully developed backbone that should have supported you at some point along the way here. Sorry. I'm drinking my herbal tea. I do have a bit of a, a chest, like a throat cold thing. All right. Okay. So how has this got you feeling? What kind of energy is this putting Pisces into? What is this stingray? What kind of energy is it putting Pisces into? Wow. Interesting. Yeah, this feels like two cards. It's just one card. So frog energy here. More water. More water signs. It's getting you deeper into yourself here. Um, this is very cleansing energy. I did not see that coming. We're going to have to pull out some tarot cards here. Very, oh, oh no. Okay. Yeah, no, it's actually not very cleansing. Typically this card is, but that's not what I'm getting. I'm getting almost like, it, it feels like it's about to pour. It's about to pour on me now. And I really need this person to step up with whatever it is that this person hasn't been stepping up for or coming to your defense, like a backbone. People are walking all over them or they're letting others walk on you. And yeah, it started off as a trickle. It's like, okay, now it's starting to pour. It's starting to pour. Like, do you think maybe you could step up at some point, um, Stingray, and help me out here? Interesting. 
All right, let's learn more about your stingray person. I'm going into my Shadowscape Tarot. Okay, Pisces person, the stingray here. Why is this person, well, they have a blockage. Yeah, wow, Page of Swords. Mm, interesting. With the Page of Swords here, uh, oh, wow. It's an interesting message coming through. I feel like this person is playing two sides. They're playing two sides of something. A little bit like sp spying energy. I just like, I see her sitting here with this little tiny white bird or swan or whatever. And you know, being uplifted, but also working with the dark. I mean, this person working with the dark side and the light side. I'm going to work with the right and the left. I just, whatever, you know, whatever works. I feel like they're not making decisions about which side to be on. What's the right side and what's the wrong side. I feel like they're just like, I'm going to stay in the middle. Whatever. Well, at some point, you all have to get off the fence, right? Like, everybody has to get off the fence at some point and have a stand, a stance. You want the dark side or the light side? This person is, I don't even feel like they're trying to figure it out. That's just where, how they do it. That's how it's always got them by. It's always got them by being like that. And it always will, as far as they're concerned. Wow. Wow, that's nice. Okay. How does Stingray feel about Pisces? How does your Stingray person feel about Pisces? How does Stingray feel about Pisces? Well, the Three of Cups, I think that's a good time. Yeah, sure, all right. We can have a good time. I don't know. I feel like, yeah, it's a good time. We can work together. We can have a good time. We can go out with friends. We can communicate and have a good time. But, you know, as soon as somebody backstabs you, they're like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. They they like you, but you know, I feel like they just play the left or the right, the right or the left, whoever side they should be on at any given point. Like I guess if you're talking with them, they're like, oh yeah, I'm on. yeah, 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 and then I don't know whatever the dark side is that maybe comes in isn't playing along the same playing field that you are. I don't want to say like they're talking bad about you or backstabbing because it's just that this other side has a very different method of operation than yours. It actually kind of goes against yours, maybe intentionally or not intentionally. And they just like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. What is the true intention of Stingray here? What is Stingray's true intention with Pisces? Interesting. You got the Page of Wands and the Eight of Cups. You know, I feel like this person is exploring new des like, you know, they've they've come up for a reason. Maybe there's going to be another zodiac this week that is going to be Stingray. <laughs> I don't know. But it feels like they're working on. They're trying to work on stuff. I I feel like maybe you've um you've woken them up to the fact that they do play both sides. They're not just being not really fair. <laughs> I don't know. It's all I can think of. So with the page of wands, like that's just what coming in this person. Sorry, with the page of swords, like it's a lot of new young message energy here, right? Pages are very young energy. It's very immature. It's very immature. Whatever, you know, is going on with this person, um, you know, playing both sides. Even I, I want to say if it's like sibling energy, if it's like a sibling and, you know, Let's say you'll talk to your parents and make plans with them. And then, um, okay, yeah, that's good. Yeah, we'll do that, honey. That sounds great. Okay, perfect. Great. So then you have your plans made for the weekend. And then the sibling <laughs> calls your parents and says, uh, I need you to do this and this for me on the weekend. I'm like, oh, well, we had plans with um, your brother or sister. You yeah, know, I need you to do this. Like, uh, what? You, come on. You always play favorites with her. What do you all right, all right. Like, I don't know. I just feel like, so maybe it could even be a parent energy. I don't know. It's, um, it's easily swayed, <laughs> this stingray person. Absolutely. The page of wands, I feel like they just want to appease you. 
you know, how can I just in the moment, you know, she's playing the violin, she's keeping them all quiet, just, just for now, just stay quiet for now, we'll do what you need for now, but it's not really getting you any progress anywhere. Oh, and then we got the Eight of Cups. So, you know, trying to figure out, I think they are trying to figure you out and trying to figure out where they fit in this puzzle. It's a very unusual person, Pisces. <laughs> they're really trying to figure, they're just, I feel like they're inexperienced or they're, I don't know. There's a block. Let's see what this blockage really is in this person. There's some sort of blockage. I feel like there's something this person hasn't dealt with in life. And it is actually seized up like one of their chakras. And just the energy flow is just not happening. And they can't move beyond where they are, where they've always been, who they've always... Like, there's no development that's, like, going on with you. Come on already. What is this deeper block within the stingray? What is the deeper block within the stingray? Deeper issue that they've not dealt with. Oh, yeah, they're not, are they? You've got the Four of Swords and Temperance. Four of Swords is almost like meditation, taking a time out, reflecting, looking deep within. And Temperance is really about, you know, playing with yin and yang energy, the balance in that so that you can have balance and harmony slowly and progressively in relationships in particular. So this person has never really taken the time to, to figure that out. They may just not be very deep. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So that's them. That's enough of them, right? That's enough of them. I'm going to go to Raider Weight Tarot for you, for Froggy. You know, it feels like it's starting to rain on you pretty hard now. <sighs> How is this rain coming in? How is this overwhelming rain coming towards Pisces? How does this overwhelming rain come towards Pisces? How many cards we got? We got four. The story, yeah, I pretty much stopped um, saying, I'm not taking that many cards, unless it's half the deck. It's always a story. You know, and it drives me crazy. I don't know about you guys. When I'm watching another reader, and it's like a few cards fall out, and I'm only taking one, I'm like, oh, come on, at least just show us. Maybe it'll mean something to me. <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, interesting. Mm. Okay. So the first one you got is the Six of Swords. You know, trying to get out of the choppy water, into the calmer weather. I don't know where I'm going, but it's a hell of a lot better than here. I think that's what you've been trying to do. Trying to get somewhere better, for sure, with this Stingray energy. The Two of Wands, it's got you thinking about partnerships. You know, even looking out, making choices. Should I be partnered up with this person? If it's a romantic, maybe, you know, you're just like, I don't know, I think I've had enough of this person. If it's not romantic, maybe if it's work related, um, you know, this just doesn't suit me. If it's a friendship, some sort of choice in a partnership here. If it's a sibling, I don't want them anymore. I want a new sibling. <laughs> or a parent. Because <laughs> it's not so much the sibling. The, others, the other people are not doing anything to specifically go against you. It just feels like that this person is the in-between. This is the go-between. And they're not going between very well. And then the Nine of Wands. Like, you know, I've really been battered and worn here. Getting kind of battered and worn with this. You know, you're still winning. You're still the winner there. And you're almost ready to release the burden. <laughs> But then we get happy again with the Three of Cups, which they had. The Three of Cups. So this is happy celebration. So that's how they see you. Yay! So they do see you as the Three of Cups too. Like, happiness, celebration. I want to say collaboration too. Like, they have feelings. You have feelings. But boy, they're bringing you through the ringer, huh? I feel like they're really, like, pulling you through the ringer on this one. Okay, so why? Why now? Why is this person in your life? Like, why? Do you ever wonder that? Like, just why? Why are you here? Why is this person in your life now? You got four cards again. Oh, wow. Oh, it's always a test, isn't it? So we have the four of wands. 
you get four cards. So this is um, union, coming together, divine, beautiful union, <laughs> coming together, soulmate card too. This person is probably part of your soul tribe. They're driving you to drink. Don't soul tribe people always do that. That's their job, drive you to drink. Then you have the death card, Scorpio energy. So to bring endings, I think this, give me a second. This per okay, so this person triggers you to bring endings to things that aren't serving you, is what they do. This is what they do. This is their soulmate contract with you. To bring ending to endings to things that don't serve you. The, isn't this funny? You're getting some repeats here that they had in the Eight of Cups. To make you really look, dive down into what it is that you want. To really think about what you want to go on that journey in yourself. Because you are triggering them to do that. You trigger each other. You both have the Eight of Cups and the Three of Cups here. You both see celebration in each other, but also, you know, I need to stop and think about what it is I really want here. Because this person is triggering me. And then the Ten of Cups, which is happiness and fulfillment. So there is happiness at the end of this story. There is happiness at the end of this story, Pisces. But boy, this person really drags you through it, don't they? I'm going to do, I'm just seeing which card is really calling me here. I'm going to do further clarification with the teeny tiny tarot. Um, I want to know what kind of a union this brings. What kind of a union is this for Pisces? Wow. The Hierophant and the Eight of Swords. For some of you, it definitely is a marriage union. Others of you, it just may have something to do with institution. But, you know, you know, it's interesting, we're clar clarifying the Four of Wands, which is union, and then we get, you know, this is Taurus energy also, but um, institutions, marriage, all that stuff. But things that you don't want to look at. So it's a union in things that you don't want to look at. There might be things here that... They trigger you. This is triggering. This is a trigger person. They trigger you. To look at things that you would necessarily not look at on your own. Because they trigger you to create ends and things with the death card, right? They do. They do do that. You know, it's um, interesting. The lovers is at the bottom. I want to say whoever you're involved with is very karmic. It's very karmic. I think you guys have played in and out of different lifetimes together for a while here. Probably been triggering each other for, for a few millennial. Um... What kind of endings does this person help you create? Please tell me happy endings. <laughs> wow. Interesting. Well, the High Priestess, that's really Pisces energy there for me. So it really brings you into yourself. It really brings you into your power. It pushes you to the point where you really become intuitive and manifesty. <laughs> I'm just like digging in and I'm going to manifest shit for me because and not be yours really like yeah it's just like the high priestess she works it like a boss and she does it very secretively so yeah she's like i'm bringing an end to this i'm going to pisces it up here but then you get the seven of swords so moving away from things you know that just don't serve you i think they sometimes push you to the point of looking at responsibilities that don't serve you anymore like what do i need to drop here you know this person i don't know this is the role they're playing in this lifetime they're just not going to have a backbone they're probably going to trigger you for the rest of your life. Because I don't see that changing with their cards. I really don't. And in the Eight of Wands, so messages. Yeah, like communication here. Forcing you to communicate too about things that maybe you would normally not. Like they just really feels like they push you to a point where you just... I need to communicate this. Yeah, because it's stuff that you would normally really just, you know, I don't need to look at that. I don't want to think about that. I don't want to see that with the Eight of Swords. 
And how do you end up with the Ten of Cups with this? Like, this is a pretty interesting story here. How do you, how does Pisces end up in the Ten of Cups? Wish fulfillment. There it is, the sun. That's it. That's it exactly. You know, you can only really get wish fulfillment when you're uh, manifesting, when you're high priestessing, you know, when you're doing all that divine source service stuff, trying to manifest, and it is. It's wish fulfillment. The Ten of Cups is wish fulfillment. So it pushes you. I get that this person triggers you, and they push you to the point of manifestation. Like, you just had enough, and I'm going to manifest what it is that I want, because you aren't stepping up. You're just not stepping up here, so I'm going to have to do it. Interesting. That is very interesting. I don't know who this person is, Pisces. I, I, let's just ask. Who is this person? Who is this person to Pisces? Who are they? Oh, you know, so many cards. So many cards. So many cards, so little time. Oh, wow. Interesting. Well, you got two kings, and you got a knight, and you got an ace. So you got the knight of pentacles. So this person is, uh, yeah, they may be earth sign. I kind of feel that when you see what else comes up. Um, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn energy. They are slow moving. It drives you to drink as well. Like, you've got plans you've made. You know, this person is slow. <sighs> And then you get the King of Chalices, the King of Cups. So this is, you know, it's very mature energy because you get that and you get the King of Pentacles. Now, kings are very controlling. Kings have control over the court, the court that they reside in. They have this control. And the King of Chalices, he has a lot of control over his feelings. He has deep feelings. But he has a lot of control over those. And you can express like your feelings with the King of Chalices and feel very safe in that. Like it's not a bad energy. The King of Swords would probably just slash you up. Like I don't have time for that wishy-washy. <laughs> the King of Pentacles here. This, this dude's also pretty good, huh? Like this guy's really worked for what he has. Um, you know, I'm really feeling like for some of you, this is a fatherly figure, to be honest. An older person in your life, you just think like you should just be doing better for me at this point. And the Ace of Cups. This person overflows with love for you. They really do. They absolutely overflow with love for you. It just may not seem like it because, you know, they're slow moving. And they're pulling out kings here. So they're in control. They have a lot of control about how they feel. They're, they're the matriarch is sort of the energy that I'm getting from this person. And it's designed to trigger you in this lifetime and make you manifest your ten of cups. Make you manifest your wishes, your wish fulfillment here is how that goes with this person. Is it interesting? I'm going to sneeze. I'm sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. I am fighting that bit of a cold. Let's get into the Journey of Love Oracle deck for you. But let, yeah, it is matriarchal. And you know, some of you, maybe your spouse is older than you because we did. I don't want to forget about that. And this is very matriarchal. My gosh. Very matriarchal energy around you with this person. Maybe it's your boss. I don't know. But they have a lot of love for you. They're like, I love you, Pisces. Just, you know, I have to make sure everybody's happy on both sides. A final message to Pisces from the Journey of Love Oracle deck. A final message to Pisces from the Journey of Love. The Journey. Oh, just one more come out of my hand. All right, then. Contemplation 69. 69. journey of love interesting for someone i just got the message that you're going to know who this person is because they're 69 years old so there you go maybe it is a parent contemplation within you there is a question arising when you get the question right the answer will be self-evident 
And it's true. I find that in tarot. I will ask a question. I will not get an answer. And then I'll change the question and get an answer right away. It's like, oh, you have to ask the right question. But you have to plunge your consciousness deep within to find the right question. To articulate it clearly and understand what it is that you are really asking. That question within you is actually a divine gift of awakening. It is your future awakened self waiting to be found and calling to you too. Let the question arise through dreams, dance, meditation, sleep, yoga, time in nature, swimming in the ocean, bathing in an aromatherapy bath, or receiving a hot stone massage. All of that sounds very Pisces to me. My way of connecting, right? The question holds within it the next unfolding petal of the lotus of your being. This oracle brings you an invitation to enter into the mystery of your life and your being and to allow the biggest question you can summon to emerge from your heart and be expressed through love. Your question may emerge as clear and shining or soft and yielding. A question with no words, only feeling. Very deep. Whatever truth emerges, let that be your contemplation. In response to that question, the next step forward will unfold before you, revealed in perfect clarity and perfect timing. This oracle brings you a message from your own divine nature. Come sit with me and breathe. I want to ask you something. I want you to ask me something. Together there is a conversation that we are to have now and there will be beautiful accord between us that overflows into all of your relationships, bringing more understanding and peace. I like it. I think this reading was literally to try to give you some perspective on someone here. They're here to trigger you. That's why they're here. And it, it does push you forward into manifesting things. Like it makes you get better things for yourself somehow. There you go. All right. There you go, Pisces. That was a very interesting reading. It was almost a little bit um, esoteric. It did verge on Capricorn energy, which is really interesting. Because isn't that what I called that at first? When I was calling out the water signs. That's really funny. Because Capricorn does have a tendency to be like that. And I could see this energy of this person being a little Capricornish too. Capricornish. Sounds like a new soup dish. But anyways. Okay. Thanks, uh, Pisces. Have a good week. Until next time, be gentle with yourselves. Bye.